Today I'm taking a look and testing a slightly bigger and more powerful mini PC. This much can already be revealed, today's device delivers the best CPU performance so far compared to all my other mini PCs I own. In addition to that, it is also remarkably power efficient, basically consumes only very little power. The device goes by the name of Chewy Corebox 5th, so this Corebox is probably the 5th iteration or whatever. Under the hood of this mini PC is an Intel i5 13500H with 12 cores and 16 threads, 16GB of DDR5 RAM, as well as a lightning fast 512GB NVMe SSD. Although the core box, the fifth, only features integrated Intel Iris Xe graphics, the Chewy brand advertises remarkable gaming performance. Today we'll get to the bottom of whether that is really true or not. But I'm mainly interested in finding out about the actual power consumption, especially compared to a desktop PC, the temperatures and noise levels. Basically how loud this device can get when under load. Anyway, today's mini PC really attracted me, even though it clearly needs to be pointed out that it needs improvements in some areas. As far as pricing is concerned, in the Chewy store, this one is listed at 499 US dollars. Either way, it is a pretty hefty price tag, which surely has something to do with the 13500H CPU. The scope of delivery, of course, includes the mini PC itself, a power cord, and a power supply, the latter with an output power of 120 watts, a VESA mounting bracket including screws, and then there's a quick start guide and some additional paper documentation. Let's start with the dimensions first, because MINI doesn't fully apply here anymore. After all, we are talking of about 199 by 158 by 73 millimeters. However, this doesn't bother me much, I still find the PC to be super compact regardless. Even though it has a rubber feet on the bottom, so to speak, the core box can actually also be placed upright on the desk. The build quality can largely be described as solid, a mix of plastic and aluminum or to be exact, aluminum magnesium alloy. I find it very appealing. At the heart of the mini PC is the already mentioned Intel Core i5 13500H processor based on Raptor Lake H released in Q1 2023. A single 16GB DDR5 module is installed, which automatically means the RAM is operating in single channel mode and not in dual channel as we might would have hoped. Nonetheless, hardware info reads out dual channel, which can be right though, since there's only a single module physically inserted into that slot. Unless there's now some strange magical way to make dual channel work without a second module that I don't know of yet. However, thanks to an additional RAM slot, you could upgrade to dual channel down the line. DDR5 5600MHz RAM by Crucial is installed, but the memory is only set to run at a harmless 5200MHz, playing it safe in accordance with Intel's official spec for the CPU. Additionally, part of the whole hardware package is a 512GB M.2 NVMe SSD by the unknown brand, at least to me, 4C, based on PCIe 3.0 x4. The read and write speeds are therefore excellent, although nowadays there are even faster options available out there. Connectivity. On the front there are two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and next to it a USB Type-C port, which unfortunately is also Gen 1 and not Gen 2. There is a considerable amount of ports and some variety at the back of the device though. First of all, the power input, a 3.5mm audio jack, 2.5GB LAN, 2 DisplayPort 1.4 and 2 HDMI 2.0 and another 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1. Last but not least, a Kensington lock. On the one hand I miss an SD card reader on here, but on the other hand I'm excited seeing the number of video outputs. 2 times HDMI and 2 times DisplayPort allows us to hook up up to 4 4K UHD monitors at 60Hz simultaneously. What the core box 5th is also bringing to the table, Wi-Fi 6 including Bluetooth 5.2 and a pre-installed Windows 11 home operating system. If you unscrew the top cover, all that is revealed is our M.2 SSD underneath. I think it's a bit of a shame that obviously only one drive of this type can be installed in here. Competing devices, especially in such higher price ranges, usually offer another slot for upgrades. 
Unfortunately, after loosening additional screws for this second cover, no sign of any M.2 slot on the other side either. But we do get a better insight into the remaining components. Among other things, the 80mm fan and the pretty beefy cooler immediately catches one's eye. They advertise powerful cooling here that can even dissipate 65 watts of heat. The four heat pipes and the fan, which can by the way reach a maximum of 3400 rpm, should help with that. There's plenty of ventilation on the left and right sides, as well as on the bottom. Although the dimensions of today's device are noticeably larger than our average mini PC, I think it's a bit of a bummer that the manufacturer didn't take the opportunity to offer us a slot for a regular 2.5 inch SATA SSD for storage expansion. It's annoying as it seems we're almost halfway there because there's even an internal SATA port on the motherboard grinning at us. Right beside it, there's even some sort of power connector that could be put to use by making use of an adapter. However, it appears they've scrapped the idea in the end, possibly due to lack of space. Now once I powered on the mini PC and entered the UEFI BIOS, to my horror I discovered how locked down we are in here. We can customize close to nothing in here. Those that like to play around with settings and optimize their machines will be disappointed. What particularly bothers me is that we can't even further increase the VRAM capacity for the integrated Iris XE graphics. As mentioned before, Windows comes pre-installed. You can choose from a variety of different languages. So we have set up Windows 11 Home, out of the box running the version 22 H2. It was activated using a digital license, which after checking, turns out to be of the OEM type. There doesn't seem to be any third-party software pre-installed, which is a good thing. No pre-installed web browsers other than Microsoft Edge, which is already a part of Windows, and no extensions have been snuck in. It also appears that neither any third-party program is running in the background, nor does anything suspicious start up with Windows. However, since certain brands, which I'm not going to name, have shipped their mini PCs with malware, I'm keeping my promise and now search and scan every device thoroughly. The first scan result by Windows Security slash Defender came back clean, no threats were found. But I wanted to dig even deeper, so I removed the SSD from the system and connected it externally to another system and then scanned it using Norton 360 Deluxe. Again, no threats. The Windows installation that Chewy offers actually appears to be clean. Let's now take a look at what the hardware is capable of. When we fully utilize the CPU using Cinebench 2024, an all-core clock speed of 3 to 4.1 GHz at max can be reported. If we additionally stress the integrated graphics unit, the CPU clock speed of course drops to 2.4 to 3.2 GHz. This makes sense, since the package power of around 60 watts that I managed to read out needs to be shared. The final test result in Cinebench 2024 is great. By far, the core box fifth takes the number one spot in my charts, thanks to the high performance i5 13500H. The single core performance is pretty impressive too. In any case, the CPU's great performance is noticeable in everyday areas of use be it web surfing, image and video editing, rendering, etc. Of course, you shouldn't get your hopes up too high for more demanding tasks. After all, we are talking of a mobile CPU. However, 4K UHD videos and watching movies don't pose the slightest problem for this chip. Even those who content themselves with compromises as far as image and video editing, rendering and the like are concerned, will end up happy with what the i5 13500H delivers. The only exception being the gaming performance that disappointed me, to be honest. While it is possible to play one or the other by now less demanding AAA game titles of past years, you'll only be able to do so with some compromises. The single channel RAM configuration is not particularly helping either, as far as iGPU performance goes. So while the gaming performance can be described as acceptable at best, you get a more attractive gaming package with some cheaper, more affordable devices that come equipped with powerful AMD Ryzen CPUs. Those tend to sacrifice raw CPU performance at times here and there, but in turn offer more capable, more powerful graphics performance. So for gaming, Ryzen in this form factor represents the overall more balanced, better package. The core box fifth's power consumption is particularly impressive when idling and when watching videos or movies. 
the noise levels are also pleasantly low. The device is operating pretty much inaudibly under low loads. However, if you demand more from the mini PC, the noise levels in my case jumps to a not to be ignored 52 decibels that can be considered annoying and noisy to some. The temperatures were close to the CPU's thermal limit, but at no point did the CPU have to be throttled. In my opinion, the measured power consumption from the wall can be described as low for the performance offered. Even compared to a regular and rather more power efficient desktop PC, the power draw of the Corebox 5th is appealingly low, especially with smaller workloads. Conclusion. If you don't do a lot of gaming, but prefer office work or some image and light video editing or something similar to that, you can count yourself happy with the Chewy Corebox 5th mini PC. The overall performance is great. Gamers who are looking for something power efficient and compact should avoid today's mini PC, as Intel is obviously not as good of an option yet as opposed to AMD with their integrated graphics solutions. As a gamer, it would therefore be wiser to rely and go for comparable or sometimes even cheaper Ryzen based devices of this type. Other than that, I'd consider the variety of ports as true highlights, especially those four video outputs which can be used to connect four 4K UHD 60Hz monitors all at once. What I find lacking, however, is that there is no USB-C based on 3.2 Gen 2 speeds, and neither is any SD card reader to be found on here. Given the size of the mini PC, I would also have liked seeing storage expansion capabilities using a 2.5 inch drive. To make matters worse, it would have been nice to have at least a second slot for an M.2 SSD, but we are not even getting that. Other than that, the Corebox 5th offers a lot of potential, but a lot of it apparently goes to waste, which quickly becomes clear when inspecting the meager BIOS settings and the single channel RAM. At the price mentioned, a second memory module that would bring us to 32GB would have improved a lot. However, it is also to be assumed that the 13500H ate up a lot of the budget the manufacturer had to work with. The result of this may be the aforementioned flaws and weaknesses regarding the remaining system. The cooling solution does get a bit noisy, but it works very effectively. The Chewy Corebox 5th mini PC has both great strengths and weaknesses. Despite the shortcomings mentioned, for me as a non-gamer, it still makes it into my list of personal favorites. What features or hardware would make the Corebox 5th truly perfect for you? A dedicated GPU maybe? If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, and if not, hit the dislike button. With that in mind, thanks a lot for watching everyone, and until the next one.